Welcome to your 2021 video horoscopes with me, Lada from Astrolada. Thank you so much for choosing me to be astrologer for you for the year 2021. And what can I say? Just a quick summary. I'm delighted to say that 2021 will be way easier than 2020. You remember 2020, if you saw the recorded, the, the videos that I created for 2020, I warned everyone this will be one of the toughest year ahead. For 2021, the action is moving from the cardinal signs like Aries, Capricorn, Cancer, and Libra, who had it the hardest, whether it was their ascendance on the moon in 2020, it's moving to the fixed signs, which is Taurus, Leo, Aquarius, and Scorpio. And when I say action, it means they'll have life-changing events. They'll have something that takes them to the next level. But passing from one level to the other is always a bit more difficult. <laughs> Especially fixed signs, they don't like changes so much. But again, it will be, again, I promise 2020, 2021 will be way easier generally for the world and every each one of us. Just a few people will be... <clears throat> A little bit more tested and 2021 is when a new age for humanity starts generally speaking this is when saturn and jupiter start their new cycle for the first time in almost 800 years in an air sign i mean they kick start this 200 year period they met in the 80s in an air sign but the last time they met in aquarius was 1226 something like that 800 years ago <laughs> so we will start a brand new life brand new era for humanity you can check out my video which is for free on youtube um, about the year 2021 for the whole world there is new hope aquarius uh, energy is coming in there is a new hope for humanity new future life will start splitting into uh, society will start splitting into not in a bad way but in a way that instead of fighting and not seeing eye to eye it will separate somehow there will be people that want to live alternatively and people that want to follow the normal rules but anyway let's get back to you because those horoscopes are specific for you uh, so let me tell you what you need for those horoscopes in order to work for you. You need to find out your sun, moon and ascendant signs. I want you to check all, all three of them if you don't, if you can't afford to buy all three, just listen to your ascendant sign at least. But you need to know your time of birth to listen to the ascendant sign. And you need to know the degree as well. And if you have time to watch all three videos, the ascendant sun and moon, then listen to the specific degrees when I speak about the moon and the sun especially. For the ascendant, pay attention to everything, the houses, whatever, for the sun and moon, uh, especially pay attention if I mention your specific day of birth, if it's the sun or the degree of the moon as well. The houses can also be relevant. Who will be affected most? Everyone feels affected by the ascendant sign, but you need to be very correct with your time of birth. Like if your mom told you between two and three o'clock, no, it's like you need 234 you know, for example, PM. Uh, and within two, three minutes at least to have your correct time or five at most. So listen to your ascendant sign and the degree, start with it. Then listen to your sun sign. And of course, with the sun sign, you just know which day you're born, but you can check the degree as well. Listen to your moon sign. If you're born during the day, which means before the sunset, while the sun was above the horizon, the sun sign is very important for you because the sun becomes your ruling light. If you're born at night, like I am, when the sun has set, you know, you have to find out what day the sun set on the day you were born. And rose, so you know, you know, when you know your time of birth, you know, whether it was day or night. So if you're born at night, the moon, it will be very important for you because the moon becomes your queen, the light. So, uh, but I would advise, listen to three of those, ascendant, sun, and moon. Uh, if you're a woman, the moon sign is usually very important. If you're a man, the sun sign is usually very important. If you're a woman in a competitive career or who has her own business or who is very much into her career, the sun sign becomes very important because the sun sign is our goals, is our masculine side, taking decisions. 
Let me say, tell you what the difference, the subtle difference is between listening to your ascendant sun and moon is. With the ascendant, it is the physical body and your fate at events. They're kind of pre-recorded for you. Uh, you really see the ascendant sign in uh, when you, if, it's, if you have your correct time of birth, you would see it as uh, basically uh, as events that materialize, that are happen around you. And they've been already, usually they're like preset somehow. They're, they're set in stone. The ascendant is the most material aspect of the whole horoscope. Uh, it's kind of like our path, our destiny, whatever you want to say, the destiny of the soul. It's a little bit, we still have free will to some extent, but the ascendant is one of the most set ones. So you'd see very material manifestations uh, with the ascendant sign. With the moon sign, the moon is the soul and the feelings. So a lot of women, because women are more connected with their feelings, tend to actually resonate a lot with their moon sign and they're like yes those things for the ascendant sign are happening but what really where my whole heart is and when my whole attention has been and where my whole excitement has been and and my focus or pain or sadness whatever has been as per the moon sign prediction so do check it out while the sun sign is, and the moon sign is again the moon is connected to the past so it's a little bit more karmic it's something that has been maybe program for the soul before our birth type of thing. While the sun sign is the spirit, which where we have the most free will. And with the sun sign, people often resonate when they listen to their sun sign. They say, wow, it's all correct. Especially people, the more self-sufficient and independent you are, the more self, um, and how do I say, the more, uh, it's the sun is where we have the will, free will power. Uh, and this is where we can influence the sun sign prediction, the events, the most. And this is what usually our goals, our dreams are about. The sun is like this ideal of the spirit where you want to reach. Something that feeds your spirit, so to speak. So that's why a lot of people, especially in the West or in more, you know, where people have more free will generally in countries like that to determine uh, their life, to determine that direction in life. Because... You know, there are a lot of countries you cannot still do that. <laughs> Some countries are still set like a thousand years back, you know, in mentality. But where there is more free will, usually in the more developed countries, uh, <clears throat> or, you know, uh, and then the sun uh, is very powerful. People can feel the sun very powerful, especially people that, as I said, men feel the sun very strongly. Women who have their own goals, who have freedom to go after career and things like that. Uh, to create their own careers, and especially if you have a stellium of planets in the same sign as your sun. For example, I'm Aries sun, but I also have their Venus, Mercury, Mars. So then I would feel the prediction from the sun sign very, you know, very strongly. Maybe not as strongly as the ascendant, but it will be up there. Uh, and with the sun sign prediction, we have the most ability, when you listen to it, to take the higher road, to use our free will, to change things to the best manifestation possible. With the ascendant, with the moon, well, with the moon, if you can control your feelings, but it's harder to control your feelings. With the sun sign, if you can control your thoughts, it's easier to control your thoughts than your feelings. With the ascendant sign, it's kind of more like set. So I told you this, how do you find out what your sun, moon, and ascendant signs are? Uh, you can, let me share your screen with my screen with you you can go to my website astrolada.com you can find any other you know astrolada.com here it is you can find any other astrology website but i have this free birth chart calculator you can go there you can enter your details your name whatever it is your birth time let's say you're born okay maybe you're not eight years old but the minute you don't need the second very few people know the second your town i'll say new york continued so it's easier and here from the drop down menu you find out which new york it is let's say there might be new york in texas henderson okay let's say i was born there and this is what you get it might look like uh, alien <laughs> alien stuff to you but all you need to do is go here, planetary details. And I want you to take those first three, ascendant, sun, and moon. You see those three. 
and write the degree and the sign. So this person that I invented has the ascendant in Taurus at 24 degrees. Don't look at the second number, the second row. These are the seconds. So just round it up, 24 degrees Taurus. The sun is at 16 Aries. Usually everyone knows their sun sign. This is the, the sun sign is the same, you know, uh, every year at the same time. And this, the, moon per, the moon sign of this person is Libra at 8 degrees. Write those down. And if you hear when you're watching Libra, for example, we mentioned Libras born uh, with sun, moon, or ascendant from 3 to 9 degrees, they would feel this influence very strongly. Well, eight degrees is within that influence so pay attention what i'm talking about you're gonna feel especially when i give specific degrees or days if you're using for the moon it will be a degree and you hear your degree or that it's within the range pay attention to that you're gonna feel this big time the same with the sun sign but with the sun sign i also give the day you are born for example people that have degree at 16 areas they're born around the 4th or 5th of april you know every year is the same the ascendant i'll give the degrees again so if i say if you're born taurus if you for tauruses um who have uh, anything in degrees from say 12 to 26 and this person has a 24 degrees in taurus you will feel this influence and so on and so on if you don't see feel hear your degree just listen start with the ascendant sign the whole prediction for the ascendant sign will you know the houses then go through the sun sign if you're born during the day the moon sign second or a second if you're born at night especially if you're a woman and end with one of the three and listen to the three of them and see which one you resonate the most with. See which one makes the most sense for you. Watch it again in the middle of the year, towards the end of the year. And you will figure out which planet actually is very strong, but always the ascendant is so important, guys, if you know your time of birth. And because anyway, I cannot fully give you, um, I cannot give you specific reading uh, I just look at the whole sign, you know, the whole Taurus I'm going to be speaking or the whole Gemini. But there is a way for you to be following daily your personal transits like no one else in the world has them. It's again on the website, personal transit calendar. You go there, you register. I already have an account. 40, 50,000 people are using it, I think, already uh, for free. It's weekly, it's for free. But no one else, no one nowhere else in the world are you gonna and i show you how to use it here there is an instructional video how to use the transits but here you put your details you can put as many people as you want you're gonna get free for them or you can buy you know i uh, you can buy for a, a year transits or for a month transits a lot of the people that are subscribed uh, subscribe for a month at a time and you can just watch with your specific transits here they come out no one else in the world will have the same transits as you on the same time. Unless you have a twin born at the same place at the same time at the same minute as you. Otherwise, those transits will always be different. And you can go through each day of the year and see which transits you have. And you click and you read and that will, you know, you don't need my videos. But in those videos, what I strive to do, because a person has so many transits throughout the year. Look at that. This is just for one month so many transits how do you make sense of them in those yearly videos this is what i help you do especially if you watch them from for your ascendant you know to a lesser degree sun and moon but they're still relevant and i give you the bigger fuller picture like a like a, uh instead of like separate you know you have like for example look how many transits i'm currently having this day today and you know so oh which one you know but i give you like a summary of it like wrap it up all right um uh, there you go i think we're ready if you have written your sun moon or ascendant let's dive in but before that just a little quick prayer for god and uh, to bless the year 2021 and to protect anyone so Dear Father, Mother, Creators, dear Jesus, dear Mary, oh Buddha, uh, Allah, whoever, 
whoever has the higher power from whatever place they're praying in the world, turn towards your higher power, to the angels, to the exalted beings that are taking care of humanity, that are, helpless, that are selflessly helping us every day, our guardian angels, our departed beloved ones. Thank you so much for protecting us, for keeping us sane during the year 2020, for raising our consciousness collectively during that year. And I ask you for this new age that starts from the year 2021, from this, this brave new world. Let it be tilted towards the positive. Let the balance go towards the positive. Let more and more souls wake up to the divine love, to brotherhood, to peace. We're entering the age of Aquarius full speed from the beginning of 2021. May God, your desire and your plan for the world be fulfilled through each one of us. May brotherhood, love, equality, fraternity come, compassion between each other rather than separation. And let everyone who is watching this video find out the most important information for them, reach their heart, reach their soul, let them connect with the information that is most relevant for them and let them be prepared and help them through the path and help me be a good channel and a good, good channeler of your wisdom, of your knowledge so I can connect the people with the right, with the right inspiration. Amen. All right, let's start. Gemini Sun Moon Arising 2021 and what glorious times are coming for you Gemini's. <laughs> I know it was hard. For the past two years, almost three, Saturn has been transiting your eighth house which is considered a karmic house or in Vedic astrology they call it house of liberation <laughs> because you pay off all your <laughs> karma or experience very fated difficult events usually psychologically especially and that's how you liberate yourself by paying off that karma so I saw quite a few Gemini let's start with a recap for the past especially 2020 when so many planets were in your eighth house Jupiter Saturn Pluto but I would say almost three years Saturn has been in your eighth house. Let's recap what was the most important things. You are paying off karma, difficult lessons. Um, and uh, I saw big, and this is also the house of big transformations. So I saw a lot of Geminis transform during those last two years. Work on their psychological issues. Work with the psychologists even. Self-analyze themselves. Dig deep into the past to understand their motivations, to understand their biggest fears, to understand the things that the thing would break them emotionally before. So what has been happening for two years? You've been, three years almost, you've been toughened up emotionally. The highest meaning of the eighth house is emotional strength. But how do we get emotional strength? By going through hell. <laughs> so you're going to feel emotionally strong when you, you know, when you faced your fears and demons and, uh, and you survived. So you have survived, Gemini. You have passed the test. When Saturn transits one of the karmic houses, like the 8th, the 12th, the 4th, this is emotionally the most testing time, I would say. And a lot of you were working to overcome those emotional uh, pains that might not be even only from this lifetime. Some traumas have happened in previous incarnations and we've carried them very deep inside. And when Saturn transits there, often as it has been, but that's ending, you know, but, but we're recapping as it has been, it's, uh, how do I say, we basically, uh, as I said, we face our biggest fears. And I can give you a few examples of Gemini rising people that I've been observing. From the highest to the most difficult manifestation. The most difficult is I have a good friend who lost her child to cancer when Saturn entered her eighth house or a big trauma can happen. And she hasn't, and she's been, she was saying, it's been so slow. It's been two and a half years and I can't move on because Saturn slows down the, um, you know, the eighth house is trauma and slows it down so you can feel each piece of it. 
and uh, but Jupiter has been helping in 2020 to heal some of the emotional trauma and it's not only losing children eight house rules all sudden events in life uh, which is death birth so i saw a lot of gemini it's the eight house is on the verge of between death and um, birth so it rules conceptions and births of children but it also rules death so i've seen gemini's experience encounters with death or near-death experiences in the last couple of years or really get interested to learn about hidden secrets about the occult about past lifetimes this is the ultimate goal that when planets transit your eighth house so you become more turned to the mysteries of life so you start investigating life after death those taboo topics you start researching them those scary topics so you don't feel the fear anymore and sometimes people are pushed into that by losing someone they love so they start looking for what's the reason is there life behind that or they go into the occult a lot of gemini that i met and that i've seen over the past two three years they got very deep into astrology into occult into tarot into psychology into self-analysis they became uh gemini's basically had had to become from their more bubbly breezy easygoing to much deeper it took them to the underground those planets in the eighth house especially saturn uh, it took them from the positive topics that gemini naturally uh, gravitate to uh, it took them to much darker places but you are coming out just like uh, um, persephone when she was taken to the underground and the eighth house is known as the underground as well it was taken by hades pluto it was abducted and raped so she suffered trauma but she became way more mature deeper profound and she came into the surface uh and that's when spring comes according to mythology when persephone emerges from the underground of uh hades so that's what's coming for you guys spring the tunnel the dark tunnel you've been passing through psychologically some might even compare it to the dark night of the soul when saturn transits the eighth house you know the tunnel you've been passing through is the end from 2021 you're emerging on the other side you're emerging reborn eighth house is transformation death and rebirth you've been going through this death slowly of your ego of your personality you can't even recognize yourself gemini's have become so much more profound in the past two years <laughs> it took them from the superficial level to deep level and you see why because you have a huge mission awaiting you gemini and it's not a one-year uh, mission in 2021. It might span out for 20 years for many of you. Because Saturn and Jupiter are initiating a new cycle for Gemini and for everyone. But for Gemini, it's in the luckiest, most auspicious house or area of life. It's called the ninth house, the house of Dharma, of good karma the house of god divine blessings because you passed through the night dark of the soul for the past two three years because you confronted your inner demons you killed the hydra or let's say you starved the hydra and you passed the trial by trial by fire or whatever you trial the, you pass the trial and you can be initiated to the higher state of consciousness which is the ninth house when you emerge from the tunnel you go to this higher state of consciousness we'll speak about that but let me say a few more things that i saw happening to gemini rising people strong gemini sun for example that i've seen on moon they've been dealing with traumas they've been working on them they've been doing a psychological transmutation within themselves they've changed so much they became profounder they became deeper uh, they've become uh, as i said this um it's uh, uh, let me give you a few other examples someone a few other people one of my best friends is gemini rising and uh, saturn jupiter um for the past two years she's been trying to deal with the trauma that happened to her in a relationship previously and she's been it's been slow process but she told me recently I, I think i'm finally healed it was a very slow process to to do to do this emotional releasing but it's finally happening so that these are the themes you've been working till now you know this eighth house which are more difficult about intimacy about ability to trust others 
uh, there might have been some problems even with resources of your spouse or partner, business partners, because Saturn can could have restricted there some issues that were created, but they're all coming to an end. There might have been some issues with insurances, inheritances as well. Um, uh, some, it, when Saturn transits the 8th house, often a person transforms their career because Saturn is duty, responsibility, and work. 8th house is the house of big transformations. And I've often seen when Saturn transits the 8th house from Ascendant in particular, maybe less so from the Sun sign or the Moon sign, but it, when it transits the 8th from the Ascendant, I've often seen when people change radically their career, and they usually stick with it for a long time after that. Like one of my best friends from a uh, lawyer became a pharmacist. <laughs> you know, she opened a pharmacy. Uh, or uh, another person that I know, I've seen other Gemini's that transformed physically as well. Like I knew, uh, I know someone who was not able to shift their weight for 10, 15 years. And suddenly with those planets in the eighth house, they something... The big change that happens psychologically when Saturn transits the 8th house unlocked the big transformation there as well. Uh, and, and she was able to, to radically transform. So, But transformation is not easy. Transformation can feel like death and rebirth. And now you're ready to be reborn. And Saturn and Jupiter, guys, are both moving at the same time. From the end of 2019 and the whole 2020, sorry, 20, from the end of 2020 and the whole 2021, they will be in the luckiest, most positive house in astrology known as the Nine House from Gemini. And it's starting a new 20-year cycle, this Jupiter-Saturn conjunction that happens in your Nine House. is the first time Saturn and Jupiter will conjunct in Aquarius since 12 26 800 years guys we you've never experienced that none of us alive here have <laughs> and uh, 700 years or something like that we've never experienced that for 700 years the last time you know so this is a um, new age for the whole of humanity new world order you'll see and I have good news for you. You can watch the independent video that will be free on YouTube. It will be like two hours about this age. But every single person will have a different role to play in that new emerging uh, role and that new emerging culture and epoch for humanity, uh, it, which will be ruled by the air signs. Because Saturn and Jupiter for the next 200 years will be every 20 years joining together in air signs and Saturn and Jupiter determine the uh, cultural and uh, uh, the, the development of society, the history, the history cycle, so to speak, the ruling classes, the, the ruling uh, social and economic uh, trends. So each person will have a role to play, but the air signs and you are the air sign, you're Gemini, will have the biggest role. They'll be the most attuned for the age that is starting, you're feeling it already, and it's also the age of Aquarius is starting, is dawning for 2,000 years ahead, but especially the first 200 years from this year, 2021, uh, till 20, no, till 14, something, 24, <laughs> no, uh, 2400, or how is it called? So for 200 years, uh, but especially the next 20 years, you will take the reins. And a lot of Gemini people will be called to take, to play a role in society according to this nine house where Saturn and Jupiter are meeting. And that role is the role of teachers in any form and shape. You will be the ones people gradually, almost like a mission, come to you to figure out who they are, the path in their life. You, you find a lot of Geminis will discover a very inspired mission because the ninth house is the house of Dharma. And I'm saying already from 2021, you'll see that. The whole 2021 is the year of air signs. All air signs will be so powerfully stimulated in a positive, beneficial way. Because all the important action in 2021 is happening in, in your 
trying on houses in air signs basically supportive of you so you know how to flow with that energy they're called dharma houses in ancient astrology this is where the north node is we chose the fastest development in gemini in air sign uh, saturn and jupiter in aquarius and mercury will go retrograde three times always only in the air signs so you're working on those dharma houses which are the self houses you're gonna find out who you truly are I'm telling you, you didn't know who you are till now. First, you had the trial in the uh, in the past two years where you were taken into those darker regions psychologically, emotionally, to work out your difficult stuff, to vaporize them and remove the poisons from yourself, from your body, from your soul, from your emotions. And you're like, I can't anymore, I can't. But you're coming to the end of the tunnel, as I said, and... It's the most divine, the, those houses, the Dharma houses are known as the houses of divine blessings. The houses I've even written here. The houses of personal virtues. You'll be developing your virtues, you know, morality, righteousness, truth. You'd become like beacons of truth for the next 20 years because Saturn and Jupiter meet in the house of truth. You'll be like a moral compass for others. And if someone is listening who is not Gemini, they might laugh out and say, Gemini, moral compass? <laughs> Gemini have no moral compass. Everything goes there with their logic. Well, you'll see now, guys, you'll see how you're aligning with very strong morals and virtues or very strong belief systems. Of course, they can be Geminis that turn this to dark. Because you'll be given such strong faith and vision and purpose. Because the ninth house is the house of purpose, of meaning, of goal. And I'm sure that the ones that are watching this video, you're on the light path. There are very few human beings that consciously choose a very dark path. And of course, they're usually not the kind of on the psychopathic uh, scale. They usually reach the highest levels of... <laughs> authority uh, but you know that some of some Gemini's might choose it for very dark things but they'll have a very powerful purpose and a very powerful purpose behind it to and, and conviction almost like fanaticism can develop in some Gemini's fanaticism uh, bigotry to an extreme but for the biggest percentage of Gemini, I'm sure the ones that are watching this video, you're on the path of self-exploration, you want to be better human beings. The ninth house will give you exactly that, striving towards those better qualities. Not only striving, but having the strength. Saturn is very strong in Jupiter and the inspiration. Jupiter is inspiration to stick, to develop those virtues, but especially to develop wisdom, the ninth house. You'd, only, you'd honestly be considered the wise ones for the next 20 years. You'd already, the seeds are being planted this year from the end of 2020, the whole 2021. Something will happen. You'd start on a path in your life that will eventually at some point over the next 20 years put you in a role of moral leadership or in a role of a revealer of truth, the ninth house, in a role of uh, some kind of um, humanitarian role as well, or the role of um, inspiration and uh, teacher, guru, guide, advisor, wisdom bringer and dispenser to others. Of course, it can sometimes it can go into the into being high on your moral horse. You know that's what we have to be careful about. But this is the role you have to be playing. Some of you might be starting with those Saturn Jupiter activation of the ninth house, a new direction of education and learning. It can start as something very simple. You might be like, oh, I have I'm nobody. How can I play such a role? I work as a, you know I sell bread. Who can I teach? Whatever. And suddenly, 2021 comes, Saturn and Jupiter trigger your ninth house of higher knowledge, higher wisdom, new horizons. And you do, you hear about a course in something you've never heard about, you know, and you're like, oh, you, you, something clicks in you because the ninth house is the house of epiphanies, of divine inspirations from above, of Dharma means the path you're supposed to walk that your soul will be most joyful. The path, and it's not necessarily your career, you know, it's not necessarily your job always this path. You can do a job, but your path might be to be consoler of others. You know, your career might be 
an accountant. Uh, but you will align somehow. You dis you will discover something will give you, you your higher self. Call it whatever you want. God, higher self. The, this is the house of the ninth house. Will align you to your meaning in life, to your purpose. Will align you to what will make you wake up in the morning with a smile and ready to take on the day. I remember I discovered astrology when Jupiter was transiting my ninth house more than 12 years ago. It's not 12. <laughs> uh, it's uh, uh, 14 years or something like that. Uh, and I remember oh, longer, <laughs> way longer. And I remember that um, it's when Saturn, and especially when it's Saturn and Jupiter, Jupiter brings the inspiration, Saturn makes you fulfill it. Saturn makes you work on it hard to make it happen. Saturn makes you be stead steadfast and uh, persevere. Because sometimes we can get an inspiration. If it was just Jupiter passing there through your ninth house, you can get all inspired and excited about the new horizon, go and explore a few different countries, a few different things. And then Jupiter goes away and you kind of deflate it again and go into your routine. But no, Saturn's going to be there for almost two, three years for you guys. And Saturn and Jupiter together is a combination of making the manifesting this house in a long, uh, ba basically whatever you start, it will have a very long term impact and very long term influence in your life. Whatever you study this year, whatever new interests you develop. Uh, intellectually, spiritually, they are to stay. They will shape you morally, psychologically, and your role in society for many years ahead. So as I said, it can start very simple as you get interested in a new course, you want to pre-qualify. If you have such inkling, if you have such desires in 2021, please go for it. Even if you don't have a desire, such an opportunity will appear for many of you to learn something new, to add extra qualification for yourself, to expand your knowledge. There will be an opportunity for some of you to travel. You might laugh at me and you say with COVID, well, nine houses, that there will be an opportunity to travel even for work or to travel, you know, nine houses, all kind of trips and distant travels. So it can be virtually traveling and uh, virtually traveling like means through your mind exploring new books exploring new areas of life you know uh, becoming seeing the bigger picture this is the ninth house you'll be allowed to go like you've been in the forest imagine that and you don't have a path especially when planets transit in the eighth house it feels a bit like that and you're walking around with the trees there. You just see what's close to you. And you don't know why you're in that forest. Maybe you're even enjoying the walk in the forest. But th there is no perspective. Is there purpose to go where you're heading? Which direction should you go? And when planets trigger your ninth house, specifically Saturn and Jupiter, it's like you're raised on the top of the forest, on the, on the back of a bird. And you can see how far the forest reaches, where it goes to... Where is the destination? And it all makes sense. So suddenly you start making sense. This inspiration will come, this wisdom, this aha. Uh -huh, that's why this happened to me. That's why I went through that trauma. Oh, that's why I'm putting this circumstance in my life. That's why that that's why I suffered so much in that relationship, or that's why my husband broke with me, because eight house influences that have been happening for the last two years often can indicate kind of extreme things, you know, big transformations, ending of jobs, starting a new one, uh, ending of marriages, you know, sudden reversals in life, sometimes of tragedies or crisis that you have to overcome and uh, psychological, emotional, physical. And you might feel like you don't know who you are after this. But the ninth house where Saturn and Jupiter are meeting is one of the self houses together with the first and the fifth, which are all being activated for you. So you realize who you truly are, what your direction and purpose are, where you're headed. And by the end of this year, a lot of you would be able to start waking up with purpose and meaning. It might not be that you are already working in the right place. That is not everyone is given to work in their dream job, whatever their mission is, but you would be waking up with a sense, a newfound sense of who you are, what your purpose, what your, what makes you joyful and meaningful 
and you can incorporate it in your day daily life and one day whatever you started in this next year you'll be teaching it some of you will be starting their own teaching projects their own teaching businesses their own consulting businesses you know nine houses to also to show the path for others you might become like a uh, a, a student to study to expand your knowledge but also you might become the teacher already um, teaching uh, inspiring others coaching these are nine house activities that you can manifest starting from 2021 uh, some university degrees some uh, scientific as well um, uh, academic achievement you can do in 2021 um, of course, Saturn is a difficult planet, so it can start with a little bit of a crisis of your faith because those two planets joining together in your ninth house want to totally change your belief systems. Uh, to uh, Let's say it actually to awaken your Aquarian belief system because Aquarius rules your ninth house of belief systems. You're naturally very humanistic, humanitarian in your belief systems, which is what Aquarius is. Your very your belief system for many Gemini they wear it intrinsically. For most Gemini, I would say, is this Aquarian quality of freedom for everyone. Let everyone do what they want as long as they don't hurt each other and themselves and others. This is the high principle of Aquarius. The belief system, which is the ninth house, you have as Gemini is Aquarian brotherhood, equality, the value of human life. Let everyone be free and do what they want, huh? <laughs> you know? Let us bring the best to society. Well, you carry those principles within you and those planets, Saturn and Jupiter will awaken them. And if you've been asleep towards those high moral belief systems and principles, they can be something like a crisis in your belief system when Saturn transit, when it's transiting there. But this crisis, because Jupiter is there, is very quickly relieve that hunger for meaning, that hunger, that loss of, and almost like the, uh, what's the word, uh, disillusionment that Saturn can bring with the world, because the ninth house is your whole perspective on the world, and you're like, the whole world is crumbling, everything is changing, I, what is the meaning and purpose of it all? You know, look what's happening. And some of you might be having initially this crisis of faith, but very quickly this gap, this um, uh, existential crisis, philosophical existential crisis that you might be going through is rebalanced or filled in by new, very inspiring ideas because of Jupiter being also there. It was If it was only Saturn, there I would say, You'd be more focused on the, wow, this this whole thing is not uh, working. I'm like, what is the meaning of life? First starts with the crisis and return to more traditional values and belief systems with Saturn transiting there. Uh, delving into ancient religions and uh, scriptural texts or some of you going back to more traditional Christianity or more traditional religious belief. But because Jupiter is there, if there is some crisis in faith and outlook on the world and existential philosophical crisis, Jupiter very quickly fills it in with other new belief systems and new horizons that are optimistic, that are humanistic, that are progressive, futuristic, all Aquarian qualities. And you're naturally in your outlook toward you're very progressive, humanistic, open-minded, my God free thinking you're you're you want everyone to be allowed to free think to express themselves this is aquarius energy and you're willing to you will stamp your mark you mark your stamp i don't know how it's like said over the next 20 years to advance those beliefs to advance those concepts of freedom to the world of uh Individual, Aquarius also rules individual responsibilities and individual truth, authenticity. You'll be teachers of authenticity, authenticity, authenticity and truth. And guys, don't you have silver tongues to do that? The universe knows its job. You're given for 2,000 years ahead, actually, that role. <laughs> of course, you're not going to be here in 2,000 years. Next next lifetime, you might re reincarnate like Capricorn. Who knows? <laughs> I'm kidding. But at least whatever remaining time you have on this earth is under the influence of Aquarius for us as humans from now on. And the air signs in 20 years, it will be 
uh, it will come Gemini conjunction in Saturn Jupiter. So if you're someone who is like in their teen years or, you know, in their 20s, in 20 years, you'll be having even bigger role, more leadership role. But now you're like the shepherds, you're the herds, you're sh you will be showing the path over the next 20 years to others. And in order for you to be able to show the path to others, you first will find it. And that's what the 2021 is most pivotal for. Um, so, and with your silver tongues as Gemini, you know, I think you'll be the new role models. Nine houses, role models, inspired, ins inspirational figures and Saturn and Jupiter joining there to give you this role. <laughs> so you better play to the highest moral, you know, that's what Saturn will do for the next two, three years. We'll straighten you out morally. We'll make either naturally for you to start and Jupiter will help as well just for one year but Jupiter will to start questioning uh, maybe the because Saturn wants to restrict to whittle down the necessary belief systems and especially you know the excessive lifestyles materialistic lifestyles that we've been having and a lot of you will start question that and uh, will turn to more minimalism in the belief systems or more I would even say it is progressive, new beliefs, but also incorporating the new progressiveness of Aquarius and Jupiter, the, the expansion of, of new ideals, of uh, new moral uh, virtues, but incorporating them with old ones. This is Saturn. Saturn brings the best from the past, from past civilizations, from past, you know, uh, that we've already learned those moral lessons. So you, you'll be some kind of a, you have the amazing ability to mix, to get from the ancient best knowledge and uh, morals and values uh, and, to, and to incorporate the new impulses. So you make it kind of modern and adaptable for society. And you'll be teaching those things somehow. I don't know. You'll be inspiring others, whatever. On a more material level. The nine house rules travel foreign countries. This can be over the next one to two years. Uh, can be the time if you've always wanted to live abroad, you can relocate and live and take citizenship in a foreign country, for example. This is the nine house. Uh, legalize a state. Saturn is to do legal, to legalize, to do in a... It, it takes effort, of course, Saturn, but if that's your dream or if it's part of your path, uh, you can very much fulfill that karma. And I think that not only in 2021, but in the next 20 years, there's a lot of travel for Gemini, international travel I'm talking about because of the Saturn-Jupiter cycle that's starting. And you're going to start this, to start to see the first indications for that and inklings from 2021, the first opportunities even for that. A lot of international travel, a lot of for work, Saturn, and for wisdom, for expanding your knowledge, for even humanitarian and uh, charitable work, Jupiter, just to learn knowledge, to explore. Um, you and, and I think a lot of Gemini will end up living in foreign countries or so interacting a lot with foreign cultures and uh, reaching out and connecting. Ninth house is the unfamiliar, not something that's part of your everyday routine, your colleagues that you know, your siblings, your relatives, your neighbors. No, these are people beyond your social status or beyond your state, from another town far away, from another state, from another country, from another social background. Um, maybe someone more esteemed, you know, someone like a teacher who has achieved more. So you're going to connect with such more erudite, more intelligent people somehow. You're going to make connections with foreigners or people with different, uh, more cosmopolitan, more uh, global worldviews rather than narrow-minded. Um, and you're going to start forming a new belief system, a new concept uh, of the world. And of course, that will open opportunities for studying for you, for traveling. Um, and from around 2022, 23 and 4, you have an opportunity to implement that in practical action when Saturn transits your 10th house. Jupiter already transited from 2022, so you can start already there, but with Saturn it's even more intense, 24, 25. Uh, 
that you do the practical steps well now if there is opportunities to study take them uh something will lead you as i said your higher self will lead you to align with your higher truth with what is your purpose uh with your dharma as we said dharma is the joy and inspiration of that what brings you joy and inspiration to the soul who you are you know you're understanding who you are you you're building yourself now um and Ninth house also can indicate legal matters. So if you're someone who wants, might be dealing with some legal matters, I'm not necessarily meaning being sued, but there's, you know, there are always legal matters <laughs> of any sort. If you're a lawyer or if you're a, a legislator of some sort, um, if you're, this will be very, I would say very productive, very high, uh, 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 visibility years, if you're in any of those year 2021, in any of those fields, if you're a professor, if you're a tutor, if you're someone like me who teaches, who tries to explain the higher principles, who is uh, trying to, um, you know, any kind of moral teaching or whatever, it's a uh, nine house, they will have where you can start some business or work connected to teaching, to spreading wisdom, to bringing hope to others, you know. Um, or sometimes it's even consultants who other companies call because they can see the bigger picture and tell them a better plan, you know. That's on the more material level. Nine House is also import, export. So if you have any activities connected to that, they might go very well. There might be some very important developments. Um, oof. So religious activities of any sort. <laughs> um, you know, there's so many things that the Nine House rules. But it's also father figures and teachers. So there can be a big change with the father figure or with the father figure in your life, with the relationship. Sometimes Saturn can challenge it as well, but because Jupiter is also there, it tends to help you resolve those issues with more goodwill. But you're becoming more philosophical, more higher-minded. You're not going to stay that the typical superficial Gemini. Well, you always have your Gemini silliness, you know, and we need that. You just don't need everyone to be serious, you know. We need people to make us laugh. And But you're bringing, maybe through your humor and through your silver tongue and through your gift of communication, you're bringing higher wisdom to us somehow. Uh, not only next year, but for many years. And uh, just want to give you specific days. Who will feel more Saturn? Who will feel more Jupiter? But So let's start with Saturn. Saturn is trining your sign. Even if you forget all those nine house themes we talked about, just trining your sign in 2021, who is going to feel Saturn and what does it mean? So whether it's your sun, moon or ascendant, if it falls from six degrees in Gemini to 14 degrees in Gemini, Saturn is trining very easy, very auspicious. So gives you the right circumstances. Trining those degrees, it means if you're born from around the 27th of May to around the 5th of June, if your sun is there, or if your ascendant or moon are from 60 or 14 degrees in Gemini, Saturn trining your sun, moon, or ascendant. Let's talk about each of them. If it's your ascendant, Saturn trines, it can help you lose weight. It can help you align yourself on your path of life. It can help you start things that will stay lasting, that will have very lasting, enduring effects. It's not going to be easy. Even the trine of Saturn requires you to make more effort, but it's purposeful effort. It's effort with meaning. Saturn makes the trine from the ninth house. It's not like you're forced into it without any desire, without what's the point of it. Like, why do I have to do extra shifts or whatever? Or... No, it's inspirational. You're, okay, I'll do it because there is a meaning and, and, and there is an end goal there. Uh, so whatever you are, so Saturn training your ascendant, it can stabilize your health. It can uh, make you reduce weight. It can make you have more self-control. It can make you be more stable on your path in life and whatever you instigate and start, especially in those nine house areas that we talked about will have very long lasting effect. If it's your... Uh, sun Saturn is trining 
from basically if you're born from 27th of May till the 5th of June approximately this year you feel Saturn the people born the Gemini born after the 5th of June will feel Saturn uh, from 2022 so these things will come to you from 2022 uh, but it's what what does it mean Saturn trying your sun well the sun is your goals your career your dreams that you want to uh, your kingdom you want to build your self-confidence so Saturn can strengthen that through worthy effort that you do it can if you start some career or job or some work project uh, or some goal of yours now it will have lasting positive long-term influence long-term beneficial results so start a business or whatever it's going to be great it will be hard work it is saturn after all but it might take a bit longer to unfold but it will give long term positive effects uh, and it will be stable the sun is also a father figures for um, men if you start a relationship with a male that can be stabilizing strong they can be like a male figure can be supportive to you or they can be an older authority figure which is saturn that might be more demanding towards you, like a teacher, mentor figure in a sort, might be woman, man, I don't know, but they can stabilize you, they can give you great advice, they can direct you well, uh, inspire you, maybe in a tough way, because it is Saturn after all, but they can uh, give you a stable foundation and grounding morally, materially as well, on your path. Uh, they, you can receive support also, trying Saturn to the sun is support to achieving your goals maybe from a foreigner ninth house maybe from a teacher maybe from an older person or more experienced person who might be demanding on you who might make you work harder uh, or your higher self making you work harder but you will the again the results will be very long lasting very it's like building a foundation building a foundation i'm talking here for your goals and dreams which is what the sun is your your career uh on 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 a high up on a stone rather than on sand that's what saturn trying to sun does and um, you can also have connection with uh something in the life of important men in, in your life father figure husband uh which is the sun uh can be stabilizing can be uh very constructive that's happening in their life or they are stabilizing towards you and the sun is your confidence your confidence can feel with saturn that's a bit tested but uh it it you're building way more stable confidence based on personal achievements based on personal efforts based again on solid achievement rather than just like oh sudden burst of uh, ego <laughs> you know uh, which sometimes happens sudden burst of confidence if it's your moon in those degrees 60 or 14 in gemini the saturn is trining it you have to see what house your moon is in from ascendant but generally moon is females mother there might be something stabilizing that she goes through a period where she overcomes something she uh, she's a supportive stable reasonable practical influence for you or it can indicate even emotional connections and relationships the moon is very emotional it's lovesick it wants to bond this is where we bond with others emotionally so they can be a bit of a more practical approach to relationship but in a good way in a a uh, good way that it's you put the right boundaries without hurting others and that stabilizes a relationship that stabilizes an emotional connection and you figure out who your most reliable connections are and you can have emotional support from an elder or more reliable person which is in the face of saturn you know this is also your personal life home family property they can be some good like if you do some repairs or changes in your home they can be lasting they can they can uh, they can take longer, but they can be very stabilizing, lasting, you know, um, if you work with property or anything, real estate, the moon rules, all of those things. It can be hard work, but it gives good results and it's kind of hard work that's supportive. 
uh, there can be some good changes structural around your home, your family and so on. You can more easily control your feelings as well and detach even from your feelings from a higher perspective. Saturn trining your moon from the ninth. It's kind of like you see things from a higher perspective so you emotionally feel more stable, more balanced, more level-headed. Uh, and there is another bunch of people who of Gemini who feel more Jupiter. They feel more of the trine of Jupiter in 2021 than Saturn. These are the later born Gemini. So the later born Gemini will have more fun now. Will get things easier than the earlier born Gemini. I said from 60 or 14 degrees, the earlier born Gemini earlier, but I can include even from 0 to 14 degrees. So the first 15 degrees of Gemini. They feel the Saturn influence more. Saturn goes retrograde from 60 or 14 degrees three times. So it's most intense for them. But it will pass from zero degrees. So, so from the beginning. So from the 22nd of May till the 5th of June. All, all those Gemini and more uh, will feel Saturn. Uh, also Jupiter. Jupiter passes through those degrees but much faster. But Jupiter will pass will pass. Three times over Gemini's degrees that are born from June the 12th to June the 22nd. So that's like the, the second part of Gemini. They feel Jupiter three times. It's easier for them for sure. Are the results as lasting? Not guaranteed. Maybe uh, now they'll get this year the inspiration because Jupiter is very inspirational. They'll feel positive. The law of attraction will start working for them. They manifest, they dream, they expand. They'll have easy access to foreign countries, to uh, higher education. Opportunities will come to them abundantly. Inspiration, higher, positive. Ninth house, the, ninth, the trine of Jupiter uh, brings more expansion, inspiration, feeling I can do it. Wow. Uh, but very likely the work that you do into that to consolidate this newfound burst of faith and opportunity that comes in 2021 will come when Saturn trines your sun, moon or ascendant in 2022. So the second part, Gemini, they'll have the harder work after that with long lasting results. But now they get the full blast of inspiration, full blast of opportunities, full blast of luck. Of Jupiter. Yay! <laughs> so if you have your Sun, Moon, or Ascendant from 22 degrees in Gemini to 30 degrees of Gemini, or born from June the 12th to June 22nd, Jupiter, full blown Jupiter, influenced the whole 2020, most of 2021. By the end of that period, so if it's your Sun there, say from born from June 12th to 22nd, Jupiter trining it. Very easy opportunities for work and career, uh, expanding your business or your goals, going towards your dreams and your goals in a positive way. Maybe some important relationship, optimistic, positive with a male or with an important figure, some kind of important figure. Sun is like inspirational figure that comes in your life. Your confidence increases easily. Your charisma as well. Your kindness. It's like... Like you take a ecstasy and you just, Jupiter is like that and you just feel joyful and connected and, and in the flow. Uh, you don't have to take ecstasy, please. It's like when you're in the flow. <laughs> this is the inspiration of Jupiter from the ninth house. You will just find some of your amazing teachers, amazing courses to study that, especially ones that makes you expand your, what is possible for you. And, uh, so if you have Sun, Moon or Ascendant in those degrees, hmm, everything can expand. The Ascendant, the Sun, the Moon, it can even expand your weight a little bit because you kind of, you're in this allowing, flowing state. It can also expand your opportunities. Um, don't get scared about the weight. You know, it also expands your energy so you can burn it off. It expands the... Uh, the good karma comes to you, let's say. The good karma and the the right uh, direction in life and inspiration can come. Um, so like the guardian angel there. <laughs> and uh, if it's your moon, there can be something good happening with your home, property, family, motherhood, parenthood, emotional connections and relationships, you know, uh, uh, 
if it's your son, usually it's with important males or career and your goals, but you have to see where the sun is in your horoscope. If it's in your fifth house, it might be something very positive happening with your children. If your son is in Gemini, or if, you're, if your sun or moon is in the fourth house, it might be something great happening with your family or in the sixth house with work, you know, that is expansive and uh, faith inducing and optimistic. Which, if it's your ascendant from those degrees, 22 to 30, your overall path in life, everything that we talked about, the ninth house is extremely relevant for you. This inspiration, what direction to take, this vision, this expanded vision, these expanded opportunities. I, I love Jupiter trines. Some kind of a dream can be even fulfilled of you, for you. So, yeah. Um, but just to say something that... When Saturn and Jupiter in your ninth house, doing all those interesting, wonderful things there, Uranus in 2021 and even part of 2022 will square them, especially Saturn, a few times, will square Saturn three times. What does it mean? Uranus is in your 12th house. There can be sudden change of your belief systems, as I said. The ninth house is beliefs, the twelfth house is spirituality. <laughs> so something is radically changing on the subconscious level, twelfth house, Uranus, spiritually for you that makes you have sudden radical changes as well and transformations in your belief systems and your worldview. Um, and there can be sudden developments about relocation or to foreign countries and stuff like that, but usually it's more like on the mental level psychological uh, kind of like you're thinking your uh consciousness level the 12th and the ninth house or the consciousness level so there is a big transmutation and um happening in your co consciousness higher consciousness and stuff and you can have like sudden insights uranus in the 12th house square it's especially the square is happening let me tell you what days it's happening in February, in June, and December, around those three months, you can have like a sudden insights that you download from the invisible worlds, like sudden inspiration, sudden ideas that are given to you, or sudden even messages from the invisible world that uh, kind of break through your whole beliefs and your goals for the future and your plans, because the ninth house is what you're planning, your your you know your mission type of thing your goals for the future your plans your plans your vision for the future your purpose you know so you're in a suddenly squaring it from the talk house you can have like a prophetic dream you can have a prophetic download from ancestral spirits or from uh, a psychic you can speak with an astrologer or psychic the 12th house rules those people or someone that suddenly gives you information that shocks you surprise you and kind of makes you have to adapt very fast and modify your goals, your visions for the future. Might be a little bit shocking, disconcerting, but it's uh, this is a great awakening process of the of and the invisible forces are helping, <laughs> kind of shaking you suddenly, you know. So there can be sudden changes also in the direction of your studies, high and knowledge, um, you know, uh, beliefs, all of those things. All right, so I was saying that also another, you know, another air sign is being very strongly activated and that's Gemini. <laughs> the whole 2021, your sign is also very strongly activated by the North Node, Rahu. Here I have a tiny little thing. It's not even a planet. Rahu is the North Node of the moon. It's like a axis. It's like a event horizon. It's where basically the North node is where the axis of the earth crosses the axis of the sun. And that's the north part where it crosses it. And uh, the ecliptic of the sun, where the ecliptic of the earth crosses the ecliptic of the sun. Uh, so we call this Rahu, the north place where the ecliptic of the earth crosses the ecliptic of the sun is north, is Rahu. Um, where the ecliptic of the... Uh, crosses in the south is called Ketu, so it's an axis, and it was very important in ancient astrology. Actually, they gave it, they, they told it the fated, the karmic notes, <laughs> they call the karmic notes because they bring some of the most fated events, so it means that this is where the eclipses happen, guys, 
Rahu and Ketu. This is the eclipse. When the ecliptic of the earth and the moon and the sun align, which is when Rahu and Ketu align basically with the sun and the moon, that's when eclipses happen. So when eclipses happen is when the most fated events happen. So again, you are called here for very fated events, but as I told you, you are protected the whole year because in the house of God, you have the two most important planets, Jupiter, protective planet, Saturn, kind of a, it's also, Saturn It's in its own house in Aquarius, in its own sign. So you have higher forces protecting you because you're important. You're important for, for the raising of consciousness of humanity. Obviously, the ninth house, you have a mission there. But you, with Raku and the eclipses, it says there will be pivotal life changes happening. Let's first talk what it means to have Rahu in the first house transit. The whole 2021, it will be there. It will not come back there for another 20, 19 years. So once in 19 years does the North Node Rahu transit your sign. This what happens. The first house is the self to discover yourself, to know who you are. Uh, to discover new paths. Rahu wants to revolutionize, to try something new, unusual. And Gemini loves Rahu. Rahu loves Gemini. Gemini loves Rahu. Rahu likes to experiment, to try new things. Gemini loves the same. Rahu, so you can feel on fire. You can feel, you know, overly stimulated even. <laughs> and Rahu entered Gemini from the middle of 2020. So some of you might have been feeling it already, the later born Gemini. And Rahu continues to be in Gemini the whole 2021. So it means that you are called to figure out who you are and you're called to create a new social personality, social persona, to recreate your persona, to recreate your um, social face and mask, so to speak. Often I've seen people change appearances somehow then as well, do something wild even. Uh, but usually the most important meaning of first house is independence. You are called to become independent, to rely on yourself. This is what you're exploring and that feels empowering. What is better than being independent? What is better than doing your own thing? You're given more free will as well when Rahu transits the first house to do silly mistakes if you want. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's kind of... Uh, Self-discovery process, of, uh, and especially because Gemini is a sign of knowledge, learning, studies, you do that a lot through learning, through information, through letting in a lot of new information and sources. And you also don't worry that you're going to get all confused in the loss of the information. There is a lot of misleading information currently as well, because you have this radar of truth, Saturn and Jupiter in the house of truth. It's helping you like no other sign sniff out what is feels what is authentically true. So you tasks in 2021, you whatever Raku is is like a it's depicted like the mouth of the dragon. Wait, does not it's like takes voraciously more and more eats 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 voraciously. So what's happening? Energy comes through your sign, through Rahu. Lots of information. Lots of you know, facts that are coming, lots of communications, even people, connections of any sort. This is Gemini. This is the first house. It comes to you. Lots of information. You filter it through your higher truth, through those planets. They're in the ninth house of wisdom and truth. And maybe you spread it and disseminate it. But now you're gathering that information and you're starting to, to see which is the real one, which is the truth one, which has meaning. And, and from all those different facts that you're gathering through Gemini, Gemini is like picking, you know, this piece of information, this, this, this. You're not just like a big jumble of information, but because the ninth house is where Saturn and Jupiter is the house of seeing how the separate parts fit into one big thing together. How, they, how the pieces of the puzzle fit. And seeing the underlining principles uh, behind disconnected or seemingly separate facts and separate occurrences. And you'll be seeing what's happening. You'll be like perceiving. The first house you perceive, you intake. With Rahu especially, you're so voracious to intake information. You're watching and but you're not just like your head exploding, which is like a jumble of hodgepodge of different information. You're 
filtering and then you're starting to see patterns. You're starting to see underlining um, connections and principles and to make sense of it. That's why you will be asked to for others to to lead them, to to explain to them, to you know, to for them to because you understand behind all this jumble of new information that is flooding in starting from 2021 for everyone for these new paradigms rahu and gemini para new paradigms in technology new paradigms in communication new paradigms in business new paradigms in society and social interactions you're taking all this and you're structuring it to a new saturn jupiter in the ninth house and to to, to a new like um uh like a new moral code for society or a new uh, you you understanding the ninth house is the best house to explain to others what was the purpose and meaning of everything so that's what you do <sighs> but yeah so the focus is on you guys rahu in the first house you can even feel drawn to very rahuvian things what is rahuvian things foreign unusual experimental progressive type of things but the south node, it's always opposite the north node. It's where the tail of the dragon is, where one excretes. So maybe your pa pa partners might feel a little bit, you know, forgotten sometimes because the focus on you, you're, you're discovering yourself, your dharma house is who you are, your purpose, you know. There might be a little bit of a too much self-focus. And you, Rahu makes you very charismatic in the first house, almost like it increases the materialistic desires and sexuality as well. The charismatic, like a wild sparkle in the eye. In extreme cases, really crazy. <laughs> in normal cases, like, oh, wow, there's something taboo and crazy and wild about this person. Rahu rules the reptilian brain, so almost like <laughs> makes you sparkle with animal energy type of thing. And it's very charismatic. People are drawn to you. But at the same time, partner might feel a little bit, you know, you might have to, because you have to discover who you are, because you have to follow your own truth this year, you might have to let go dependence on a relationship. You might have to disconnect a little bit from a partner. In extreme cases, if you are not with the right partner, it can bring a separation, ending of a marriage, of a committed relationship or business partnership. Uh, letting go of an attachment towards someone, someone important disappearing from your life, letting go, I'm not talking death necessarily or anything like that, but letting go because you need to be your own person this year. Uh, your priorities are more important. Don't become a selfish douchebag. Uh, again, I think you have the moral compass to see what is right and wrong and when you're overstepping the self-obsessiveness of Rahu in the first house, through those planets of Saturn and Jupiter in the ninth house of morality, moral compass. Uh, a little bit rough can make self-obsessed people a little bit, you know. But at the same time, you need that right now because you need to discover new modes of operation, new modes of approaching the world. You're recreating with Rahu in the first house your social persona and to understand who you are, you know. To become passionate about yourself, even about your appearance and physical body, if it's your ascendant in Gemini. Um or to become, uh, sometimes even I've seen, because Raku has this, the North Node, has this, okay, the the fake it till you make it energy. I remember when Raku was transiting my ascendant, I was still not an astrologer, but I, w I made myself credit cards, not credit cards, uh, ID cards. What's that? Business cards that I was an astrologer, I was a waitress. And whenever I would go out with my friends on high heels and all, you know, dressed up in bars, I'll be watching, oh, this is my business, I'm an astrologer. <laughs> no, that's, that's years before I started it, but I started faking it. And within two years of faking it, I made it. <laughs> it actually started happening. So sometimes it's like, what persona do you want to have? So now you're passionate about to, to, to start, you know, imitating it, to start doing those things uh, with Rahu in the first house. But sometimes in extreme cases, it can mean like almost like, a, you know, the negative side of Rahu is like a snake that, uh, sna that goes through, wants to climb up the social ladder. Rahu is very ambitious, wants to climb social ladder. So it's willing to appropriate any persona it can 
uh, even lying just to make it in a certain social economic achievement. So it becomes very desirous. This is the negative side of Rahu. Strong desires for uh, material or achievements or recognition, privileges. Rahu is privileges, material privileges, you know. So you can feel like you're bustling with those desires for it and you can even are willing to do something that is not on the traditional path in a sense. The negative side of Rahu is lie or pretend, put on a persona. But sometimes it's necessary for a little bit to put on a persona and actually you might decide you like it and stick with it, you know, and you might incorporate it into yourself. So, you know, Rahu can be taken to an extreme where you, the selfishness makes you like delude others, whatever, who you are. But the healthy operation of Rahu is that you experiment, try new different personas, behaviors. Uh, if Rahu, if your sun sign is Gemini, even like new goals, career, uh, foreign connections with foreign persons. If it's your moon, uh, they can be try the role of motherhood, try the role of, uh, uh, you know, new emotional connections that are different, exciting, you know, to experiment, to break the mold. To pretend a little bit, to see, hmm, does this fit me? Is that going to be fun? <laughs> but let's come back to the seventh house, south node. South node there, uh, it means that you can spiritualize a relationship sometimes. It can mean being in a more platonic relationship. It can mean attracting a partner that is of more spiritual quality. Someone that you've met from past lifetimes. Rahu transiting, Sketu transiting the seventh house. I have seen it that people from the past can appear for closure. And... I even had a case where someone says, but I met someone new, but they feel so familiar. It's someone you need closure, someone you've met before in a past lifetime. It might be a soulmate. You know, I remember when Ketu transited my seventh house, I met my ex-husband and he stayed in my life for seven years. And it, we had past life connection. I saw in a past lifetime that he left me when my family lost our money. You know, so we had the closure to do. I had to help him. He had to help me. So we separate in good connections. But you might feel like there is a need to make a sacrifice in a partnership of some sort for a higher good or whatever, uh, hopefully. Or if you're not in the right relationship, it can be dissolution, ending of a relationship, business partnership, contract agreement. Um, and especially, uh, but also it's spiritualization of relationships, so making connections with more spiritually elevated people or more disconnected. That's the lower manifestation of self. You no, know, it's like your partner zones out of reality and the more material and desirous you become with Rahu in the first house, the more like they become passive, south note negative influences like that sit on the couch, just check out of reality type of thing. It's an extreme case. It's just telling you that's possible manifestation. I hope that it's not for you. Especially, you know, the um, the ascendant people in Gemini, the, the moon people can feel that. The sun people, actually, they can have increase in career, in goals and stuff like that. Uh, change of career. And Fated events can happen because the eclipse has happened on the axis of the first and the seventh, where Rahu and Ketu is the first, is the lunar eclipse on May 26th at five degrees Gemini, so in your seventh house. So there might be a completion around the time of a relationship, completion of some project with a partner, with a collaborator, ending of a personal relationship, or ending of a chapter in the life of a partner, or uh, taking a relationship like full moons or eclipses with South Node, just some chapter ends or is completed and you see the results of that, but it's connected to another person, it's connected to a relationship of some sort as well, or it's connected to, it's not something alone, but it's something you've started already and you might be seeing the results there. Maybe the completion or the seeing the results of a contract, of a business deal, of um, business transaction as well. It might be a fated relationship as well, fated development in a relationship. If your ascendant is within five, is in the, around the fifth degree of Gemini, which means if you're born around, uh, fifth degree of Gemini is around the 26th of May, but I'll give you three degrees orb. So from around the 24th of May to around the 29th of May, 
it means the lunar eclipse is opposite your sun. It might be some important faith that you've been connected with the father figure, with your goals in life, with your career. That is more like a completion, resolution, seeing the results of or endings. If it's the sun, is father figures, um, bosses, authority figures, male figures, uh, your path in life, yourself as well, and health. Um, then if it's your ascendant or moon, relationships for sure. Um, from around, as I said, that's around the 15th. No, that's which degree is that? It's around the 5th degree of Gemini. So I would say from 2 degrees in Gemini, if you have ascendant or sun or moon, to around... Seven eight degrees you, the, you can feel this eclipse on May 26 faith at events in your personal life with yourself Especially partnerships are somehow involved something completing coming to an end turning around Then there is a solar eclipse on June the 10th You can feel it not on the exact day you can feel it a month before and even six months after that uh, With the lunar eclipse as well a month before three to six months after that so the solar eclipse is on June the 10th, it's at 19 Gemini, so anyone born with Sun, Moon or Ascendant from around 16 degrees of Gemini to around 22 degrees of Gemini, they're going to feel this eclipse very strongly. That's a big one, that's, that's the one Geminis are really going to feel because it's, it's a solar eclipse, Sun, Moon, the stronger the solar eclipse, Sun, Moon together. And so it means if you're born from around the 7th to the 13th of June, you'll feel it very strongly, especially around the 10th, 11th of June, 9th, 10th, 11th, the exactly around 19 degrees. New moon eclipse with Rahu. What does it mean? Well, that year, I'd say if there is an eclipse, the whole year is affected. But especially watch out what's happening around even already May, June, the month after June. The days around the 10th of the June, weeks before, after. Powerful new beginnings. Faith at new beginnings event. If it's your son, there might be a new important person appearing in your life. A new career path. A new important development. Uh, and because it's with Rahu, you gain something. You receive something. It's more material in manifestation. For example, my husband had Rahu, full, exactly the same eclipse. Full moon. Sorry. New moon with Rahu. On his birthday, exactly, and the son represents the father. And I was like, "What's gonna happen with my husband?" Well, not. He had like a, a epiphany and change in the goals he wants to do in regards to his direction in life. He had like a little crisis because he was like, "I want to develop a certain career. It's time for me to do it." And within that year, he finally d discovered. Um, his career because when the sun is involved it's usually connected with career your role in the world you know who you are he developed you know so but immediately when the eclipse happened he his father called him said i'm getting married i'm selling my businesses so it was like a totally fated change in the life of his dad so if it's your son there it means you're born from around the 7th to the 13th of june big change of direction in life of important males um Father figures, new beginnings in your career, new beginnings, uh, new, and it might feel like a crisis. You might feel like, you know, eclipses is, you don't know what the future is holding. They, they shake you up. They, they, the changes are you don't, suddenly so, so sudden then they are like, you can't escape it. It's faded. <laughs> you know, it's like, bam, you have to make a big change, a new path in your life, a new direction. You know, it's in your first house. If it's your ascendant, the same, you know. The same with the ascendant, with the moon. New moon eclipse on your moon. You can get pregnant. You can start a family. Something sudden can happen with your mother or with an emotional relationship, with an emotional connection, with your personal private life. Oh, wow. Depends where, what house your moon is as well. You know, if it's in your second house, new financial situation <laughs> the, or new feeding, eating habit or whatever. Moon naturally rules habits um <clears throat> habits and nurturing and nourishment so there can be a new change there sudden you know surprise with this eclipse uh, but it brings usually something new maybe connected to parenthood to motherhood to place of living to family 
emotional state. It can feel intense though. It can, because eclipses can always feel like a crisis, like, oh my God, you know, it's like a bit of a shock to the system. Oh, something new out of the blue, but it is fated. Then there is another eclipse. <laughs> okay. In lunar eclipse on November 29th, it's in Taurus already, not in your sign. It's like in your 12th house. But the late born Gemini will feel it. Those born from the 21st on the 21st, 22nd of June of, of May. Sorry, the early born Gemini. Sorry. So the very early Gemini, 21st, 22nd of May, or those who are born zero degrees Gemini, Sun Moon arising, one degree to two degrees Gemini, Sun Moon arising. So Yes, they will feel this lunar eclipse, completion, conclusion of something around November the 19th, maybe a few weeks before, maybe a month after, ending, completing. Um, it's in their own sign. It's full moon eclipse with Rahu. They usually it's like a harvest time. You receive something. So the early born Gemini will feel this eclipse. They receive something and they complete it. They end it type of thing. Then there is a final eclipse in your seventh house. It's a solar eclipse, new beginnings, but with the south node, you have to clear up something, especially who will feel it. Not everyone feels it, but the, it's on December the 4th, this final solar eclipse in your seventh house, people born from May 31st, Gemini's, to June the 5th, especially June the 3rd, 2nd will feel it the most. Uh, it's at what degrees is that? It's at 12 degrees. So anyone born from 9 degrees Gemini Sun Moon arising to around 15 degrees Sun Moon arising, 9 to 15 degrees, they feel this eclipse strong. New beginnings in relationships can be a fated relationship. Often when Rahu and Ketu transit the axis of the first and seventh, for people meet fated karmic relationship. And I'm not saying karmic means bad. I'm saying karmic as like you're meant. There is like a soul agreement there. What you make out of it is up to you. After that, we have some free will, of course. Uh, but it's like it's not casual. You know, that might be someone very important that stays in your life or... In the other case scenario that leaves that who's been there and, and by karmic agreement they have to leave they you know you have to separate paths so this is something important that might be happening again with relationships in your path in life uh around december uh the fourth of december you can give it a few days before a few weeks a few months after that the solar eclipse is up to a few months but there is a big shift here guys with those eclipses on the axis of who you are where you are heading what you want from life how do you want to be independent because you're changing you can be changing your relationships and uh, comp and meeting new people that are very different than before as well we're on a more spiritual kind of more past life connection thing there all right interesting interesting lots of lots of activation and then we have to look where Mercury goes retrograde. Mercury is your planet, Gemini. So it is the most important planet to watch wherever it goes. Your focus goes there. Mercury goes retrograde three times. Guess where? In the air signs, in the Dharma houses of who you are, your purpose, your meaning, inspiration, finding your direction in life. Again, the universe is saying, Gemini, this is the time you have to discover you have to discover your hero. <laughs> you have to discover your inspiration. You have to, these are the most divine houses, the house of divine blessings, because when you get connected to your Dharma, you're, you find joy. You're on the right path in life, you know. And, and, and then everything in life resolves. So that's what you're working on, who you are. <laughs> what is it that your soul rejoices in? What is it that you're meant to, you know, what's the whole meaning behind this whole thing? So let's start with Mercury retrogrades. It's the first Mercury retrograde. Is and because your Mercury retrogrades in the air signs, it means they're very supportive to discover who you are. The first Mercury retrograde happens in your ninth house from January the 30th till February the 20th, from 11 till 26 degrees. 
in Aquarius. So it means that 11 to 26 degrees in Gemini Sun Moon Horizon will feel it the most. It's kind of supportive. It's making a trine. Uh, it means born from the 1st of June till the 18th of June. People will feel it. It can be a time that uh, you are doing revising, re-examining, re Examining your beliefs because it's from the ninth house, your knowledge, your wisdom, some teaching project that you're revising, something connected to traveling, to higher education, to foreign countries, to legal matters, to documentation that you have to be a bit more cautious, but it gets resolved really well and gives you great results because it's a trine after all. Any kind of mercurial work, studying, learning, communicating, talking, teaching, writing is highly Will give it will be more demanding during the retrograde period but it will give three times more lasting results just be careful on some trips they might take longer or they might you might have a plan b or c some of you might decide to re-examine what education they're going what studies you're doing as well but it's generally very supportive i think some you can revise higher knowledge you can change your point of view you can change your belief systems while mercury is retrograde in your ninth house but it's for good because of the trine aspect and any mercurial activities as i said i mentioned them especially those degrees that i said yes it gets more demanding but you resolved it really well and you help like any mercurial activities, their business, their communication, <laughs> it's all of those things. They, they kind of lucky for you, even during the retrograde motion. If there are problems, you solve them and you get good lucky results. The mercury goes retrograde from May the 20th to June the 22nd. Guess where? In Gemini. From around 16 to 25 degrees Gemini, they will feel it the most in your first house. So if you have Sun, Moon or Ascendant 16 to 25 degrees in Gemini, which means if it's your Sunday, you're born from the 6th to the 17th of June, approximately Mercury is retrograde in your sign. That will be felt very strongly now. Now... Now I cannot tell you, it depends on your horoscope, what aspects your sun, moon or ascendant are receiving naturally. If they are good aspects, it will just mean uh, intense period of mercurial activities when it's retrograde. In communications, information, reconnecting with people from the past, re-examining your path in life and who you are. Even seeing yourself from a different perspective, getting in touch with people from the past. Uh, it can mean like doing mercurial activities like editing, organizing, managing, sorting things, making them more organized and systemized, uh, doing unfinished work, ending things, important communications with family because Mercury also rules your fourth house, clarification, information, having to use the skills three times more. Having to use the information flow increases and you have to fix, edit, correct, business, all of those things, any administrative business, mental responsibilities, they can become more intense. You have to be more careful. You find out mistakes. You have to fix them. But the final result in business or whatever, that is Mercury, is, whatever is using your hands or mind or mouth, <laughs> your skill set. The final result will be three times better. I remember when Mercury was retrograde on my ascendant sign that uh, it was fantastic time when I was I I was releasing my first course, and during the retrograde period, I just had to edit it, fix it, put it together. So I did great job there, you know. And when it turned direct, I released that product. But if Mercury is receiving bad aspects from those degrees that I said, uh, 16 to 25, in your horoscope, depends personally, or stressful aspects, let's say, that can be more stressful. You can, miscommunications, you know, in this period, May 29th to June 22nd, it can mean fixing mistakes that you've made, having to talk conversations that, Clarifying conversations, say something that you're upset about, you haven't brought up till now, you bring it out now, you can no longer, you know, it has to be addressed. Uh, there can be escalation of certain, you know, relationships. I remember when Mercury was retrograde over my sun sign in areas I broke up, you revise certain partnerships and relationships or certain, you revise certain people that you're connected through career, the sun, or through goals, uh, 
you can or relationships with male figures if it's your moon you can change some circumstances in your family life you can change how you feel about someone when mercury is retrograde there you can really evaluate emotional connections and bonding you ha might change something around your place of living uh, there might be certain delays or things that have to be fixed around the home and property with the moon with the sun is generally career communication uh, a, a career goals in life male figures you know you can you're starting to learn now what each one of those things mean but that's probably you can feel it that's going to be kind of an intense period and again as i said usually the best what happens is that by the time mercury returns direct you're very grateful for that retrograde period because you sorted out some problems you fixed them maybe they were piling up for a bit and you didn't tackle them and when mercury goes retrograde there is no avoiding it you go and fix them and uh, manage them organize them uh, especially people who have their business or who have meant who have to use their skills in some way they can feel very satisfied at the end of a mercury retrograde period over their ascendant sign or sun or moon because they've done the best they put three times more efforts with their skills and duties. Yes, it's frustrating when you have to fix things. When you see it's not perfect, that's what Mercury Retrograde makes you see. Oh, it's not perfectly done. It can be done better. But at the end, you're like, I'm so glad I made those changes, those repairs. It's the final product is way better. But somehow you're doing those efforts. It's not others making you do it. It's passing through your sign. Um, and it's ultimately, again, to give you independence, to give you those skills that you're going to be using with Mercury, this information that you have to process. It's about more independence. It's about putting you on the right path again, figuring out what's the best thing for you. Some of you might even revise your body, how you feel about your body, your attitude about your uh, appearance as well around that time. And then the last Mercury retrograde is from September 27th to October the 18th, uh, from 10 to 26 degrees in Libra, which means uh, if you have Sun, Moon or Ascendant in Gemini, from 10 to 26 degrees in Gemini, you would feel this eclipse in a very beneficial way. It's a trine, it's in your fifth house. Or if you're born, if it's your Sun sign from 31st of May to the 18th of June, 31st of May till the 18th of June, this final Mercury retrograde is very beneficial for you from your fifth house. Um, creatively, you might be working on some project to fix it, to improve it, to make it better. You can creatively shift your perspective on something. You can shift your a romantic partner from the past can come as well with this fifth house. Um, all Geminis feel the Mercury retrogrades, but those degrees feel it a bit more intensely. That's what I'm saying. If you're Gemini, just listen to this Mercury, Mercury retrograde in the first, Mercury retrograde in the first, in the ninth, in the first, and then in the fifth. It's for all of you. I'm just giving the degrees that those degrees will feel it a bit more intensely. So the last Mercury retrograde in your fifth house. Uh, okay, let's see. They might be okay. Let's see possibility. You might be revising a romantic relationship. That's one possibility. Someone from the past romantically don't have closure with can come up. You might hear back from a past romantic relationship. Or if you're in a romantic relationship currently, you might have some clarifying conversations with your marriage partner, whatever, about how to have more fun, how to feel loved. Do you feel loved enough or no? You know, maybe conversations with the children, fifth house rule children how to make the relationship better, how to organize their life better, how to, if there are some issues and stresses with children, they have to be addressed when Mercury goes retrograde, usually through communication and exploring different options. That's, that's the tools of Mercury. Let's talk. Whatever problem your child has or your relationship partner, fifth house is loved people, you know, lovers, whatever. Let's talk. And if we can't find balance, a relationship, romantic relationship can have like a little crisis. But usually people with words, Mercury is quite good of helping us solve problems this way through communication. Or it can help you just shift your perspective, your internal dialogue. This is Mercury in regards to a loved one or in regards to your attitude towards children and your approach to children. Or shift your mental dialogue about your own inspirations. What do you need about to feel happy and to feel joy like a child? It makes you re-examine what are the things that will really 
make me have fun and experience joy from life. And you can remember certain things you used to do like a child when Mercury is retrograde in the fifth house. Uh, you can start talking about the things you used to enjoy. Wow, maybe I should pick this up again. Come back, try it. You know, maybe you painted as a child. Maybe you, you played being a teacher. Wow, maybe let's try. Let's try to, you know, or maybe you loved whatever, whatever it is. You can come back to something that you loved before to revive it. And basically to the fifth house is God's given natural talents to us. That comes so spontaneously, like a, like a child that loves to do it. That comes to us like children, the things we used to love to play the most. These are the things that, again, it's a dharmic house. So what brings us joy and aligns us to a path that is most truthful and authentic to ourselves. So again, you discover and you dig deep and you research. That's Mercury retrograde. What are those things that make you sparkle? What are those things? And these are also creative ideas. Some, some your thinking might shift a little bit and you might find yourself with some brilliant new creative ideas. I remember when Mercury was retrograde in my fifth house. Oh, it was 2012 or something like that. And I remember that then I had a little crisis with my website, fifth house is the things that you create. Your business can be fifth house as well. Things that are your own ideas that you are uh, manifesting, your own inspiration. So the website started malfunctioning and I just get started getting a lot of emails from people. It's so hard to navigate. It's always been the same website, but Mercury started retrograde and I started getting criticism for, for something I've created. And I was like, fuck it, I'll just make a new website. I was frustrated, but that gave me a brilliant idea. And that's when astrolada.com started. So something like that can happen. You can revise something and you say, I can do it better when Mercury is retrograde. Then the fifth house, something that you created, a better creative idea. So that's another way it can play out. Woo! <laughs> All right. A good time. You can feel is when Venus is in your sign, guys. Hey, it's from May the 10th till June the 4th. May the start of June, May the 10th, June the 4th. When Venus enters your sign, that's a good time for anything Venusian. So if it's your sun sign, you can uh, sun, moon, or ascendant, you're gonna feel more attractive. You're gonna feel more, uh, you can make more money during that time. You can attract more abundance, pleasures, luxuries. If you want to do something that really gives you pleasure. I'm talking sensual things. I'm not talking joyful inspiration. I'm talking like massages, shopping, good restaurants, go on a holiday, go on a date. If you want to attract people towards you, if you want to present your best side, your most charismatic, if you have important conversations where you want to be diplomatic and charming, do it when Venus is in Gemini. I often, some of the most important things that I started uh, in my life was when Venus was in my sun sign, uh, usually in Aquarius, you know, in Aries. So, because then I just feel graceful there. I then I just somehow, you know, so I, I would advise you if you want things, especially on the material level, because Venus is more material, worldly planet. If you want things to go easier, uh, start them when Venus is in your sign, guys. Uh, and in dates and stuff like that. And I think when you will be most productive is when Mercury is visible as well. Um, well, I mean, during the retrograde period, you're going to be putting more efforts. But the what really manifests in ancient astrology when you feel most visible, when you feel like everything you're doing is being noticed and it's giving material, actual, tangible results is when the planet that rules you and in your horoscope, Gemini, this is Mercury, is visible. So Mercury will be this. So I would advise you, if you're a business person, whatever it is, every time when Mercury is visible, do the most important outer material worldly things that are connected to writing, to speaking, to trips for you, that are connected to, to everything in your life. Everything that you want to be successful, do it when Mercury is visible and Mercury is rarely visible. I'll give you the dates Mercury is visible this year. From around January the 8th to around January the 31st. So from the 8th of January to the end, Mercury is visible. Anything important you want to publish, to talk, if you want to be noticed, if you're doing anything for business, this will be your most... Uh, auspicious periods, I would say, or the ones that you can make most impact. Your actions will have visible effects. 
Then Mercury is visible from the 20th of February till the 11th of March, approximately in different areas of the world. There might be three to four days difference, depending on the quality of the air. Then Mercury becomes visible again from April 27th till May 26th. So most of May is visible. Good month. Then Mercury becomes visible most of July. From around July the 2nd, even from the 1st, till the end of July, till the 26th, 28th of July. Then Mercury becomes visible again from the middle of October till the middle of November. So that's another auspicious time. Auspicious in a sense, anything you want tangible results to it then. And then again, Mercury becomes visible from December 22nd to the end of the year. You can feel more on top of your game. You can feel more alive. You can feel like you're hurt. You have seen more, you know, more gravitas impact. There you go. During when it's invisible, you can retreat a little bit, prepare, do the hard work type of thing, you know. And that's it. Now let me give you again. The final piece is the outer planets. The outer planets affect very few people. You know, these are the one of the life-changing transits. And out of the outer planets, we have Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Uranus and Pluto are not affecting. They're not making aspects. Here is Gemini. Uranus is not making aspect to Gemini. Pluto is here in Capricorn. It's not making any of the Ptolematic aspects that can be felt strongly. But one planet is, and that is Neptune. So if you hear your degrees mentioned now, only for you. All the other Geminis can switch off this video. That's the end. There is nothing more for them. I'm just focusing on those whose degrees I'm going to mention. They will feel the Neptune influence. Neptune is going to be from 18 to 23 degrees. 18 to 23 degrees in Gemini, sorry, uh, in Pisces, which means that Pisces, which means that Gemini who have Sun, Moon or Ascendant from 18 to 23 degrees, Neptune is squaring their planets from the 10th house. Basically, if you're born from the 8th to around the 14th of June, 8th to the 14th of June, well, they're going to have Neptune square and actually 8 till the 14th of June let me see something yeah they are not having the influence of Saturn to stabilize them uh, the trine of Saturn to make them more realistic they're just having the Neptune influence they are having the trine just just those born on the 14th and 13th of June are having the trine from Jupiter to make them see through the truth a little bit but mostly it's Neptune what does it mean so 18 to 23 degrees Gemini Neptune square your Sun Moon or Ascendant okay let's start with the lowest possible manifestation confusion um, feeling a bit like a dead fish <laughs> feeling a bit like what am I supposed to do and you know I'm glad that Saturn and Jupiter in your ninth house they're activating it to get you clarity but I am I'm, I'm definite for you that you're gonna feel Neptune very strongly so the first one is confusion. You're at sea with no sails and you're like, where am I going? They can be periods like of deep emotions, like ebbing and on and off like that. You can feel like you're on this flow of emotions. Very few people will feel it only. Again, that's such a small scope of Gemini. Some have already passed it. Some will feel it in the future. Uh, I would advise you while you're under the influence of Neptune to always look for a counselor or, or advisor. Find the teacher. Focus on those Saturn and Jupiter in the ninth house of the truth. Before taking a life-changing decision during a Neptune transit, consult advice, consult your tarot, consult your angels, call an astrologer or call a friend that is very reliable and trusting a mentor figure to rely on because Neptune fogs the vision. For example, I, I remember someone when Neptune squared their sun, they're like, I'm in love. 
uh, I'm married, I'm getting married to this guy, and the sun means male figures. And I'm like, I sure you know him well. Yes, he's amazing, he's so spiritual. And usually we attract when Neptune makes aspects to our sun, moon, or ascendant, very spiritual people, spiritual like looking. They are like dreamy, they might be involved with Neptunian things, wine making, or um, uh, music, or spirituality, or art, or they might be into addiction, they might be into healing of some sort. But because it's a hard aspect, there's something we're not fully seeing. There might be some hidden vices, you know, around people, around us. And turned out that guy was actually gay. And after one year, she was like, oh, he's gay. Like, why didn't I see that? Well, it's Neptune. It's, it's, and you can't really escape that. I don't know what to tell you. You can't, there might be things that you get um misled about someone or something maybe you have to for a little bit and when you actually you become very altruistic and you just want to give to someone just to make them happy or you know just to not only someone it might be some goal or project and that's the highest manifestation of neptune if you don't want to be taken uh, for a ride so to say uh, try and give uh, from yourself unconditionally to something or someone to some goal to some purpose maybe do some charity work maybe help friends that might need it nothing goes wasted but you might feel like you know it you might not feel like you're seeing results from that currently but it's just neptune the ultimate goal of neptune is to refine the spiritual energies and to refine you to attune you to a higher reality so it tends to dissolve the more material aspect and ambition of life. So only for you, even though you have Rahu in the first house, you might feel way more disconnected from the material side. Uh, you might feel that you want to retreat into world of music, into world of imagination, into world of reading, into world of addiction, the law of manifestation of Neptune, of uh, changing your consciousness of mind altering <laughs> experiences you know uh, but usually the highest manifestation is you become more spiritual more sensitive even but initially when you start becoming more sensitive uh the higher worlds are very confusing especially with mercury neptune square so you get like a lot of hunches but a lot of them can be wrong but you're feeling something is there happening uh, and how can it play out? If it's your son, Neptune squares, it can, for example, make you disillusions with a disillusion with a certain career path. It can dissolve a career path. It can resolve a relation, dissolve a relationship with a man or make you, or with an important male figures or father figure loss. Neptune can mean loss or loss of a career, but also it can spiritualize your career. It's, for example, even the hard aspects are great for people that are in pharmacy, in medical field, that are actors, you know, Neptunian careers, that are spiritual leaders and uh, figures. For example, Robert Pattinson, he had Neptune square the sun when he became huge. So if in those fields, or if you're someone who creates computer games, who uses the imagination or writes stories, anything about the imagination and creating alternate realities with the imagination or uh, alternate states or someone who works with water and beverages or in a bar, Neptune, or who is a chemist or pharmacist, you know, chemicals, mind altering, whatever, it's all Neptunian stuff. Actually, it can be very stimulating for your career, you know, even the hard aspect, you get like even more in that sphere. But people that are in very kind of... Um, Neptunian, anti-Neptunian, very figures that are involved with figures, with number crunching, with a lot of structure organization that is more in the bureaucratic side, or that in careers that are quite, let's say, hierarchical or career-like, they might feel disillusioned. They might feel like, oh, I've lost meaning and purpose here. I, I it doesn't feel relevant. I don't connect emotionally and dissolve those careers. Sometimes a person just takes a sabbatical on Neptune squares the sun or is confused which is their path, which is their direction. They usually go again. If if you want, you know, if you want to, if you don't want to, you know, because Neptune can dissolve those the ambition or drive the discipline, the daily discipline or the motivation. You have to give yourself a Neptunian channel. For example, start swimming. Whether it's your sun, moon, or ascendant, doesn't matter. Start swimming. Start 
uh, going in nature, spending more time alone. Neptune likes to, to shake because you become super sensitive and absorbing other people's feelings and emotions and you might mistake them from your, for your own uh, when Neptune is around. So you need to spend more time alone to shake off such more, you know, Neptunian feelings so you're not so confused. And it can be great time to journal or to, you know, read alone, to read do spiritual stuff alone to meditate just just to zone out on the tv you know and allow yourself to do things like that art paint music all of those things romantically it can be like oh i'm in disguise this i've never felt so you know i want to sacrifice everything for this person and others tell you but he's married doesn't matter i just want to make them happy you know whatever sometimes you know Neptune, and you might even be aware you know this is not the ultimate thing is not you know it's not practical but my soul calls me to that and you might have to do it you know um and the other thing of neptune is that um it can create a little bit of watery conditions like swelling uh liquids in the body uh but neptune squares what can i say they, they, <laughs> i i want to be more positive it's just more difficult with neptune you can't navigate it you can't control the ocean the feelings of emotions you know but it can also the ultimate goal is it will spiritualize you it will make you more compassionate it can make you get in touch with your spiritual side with your high intuition <laughs> again it might be wrong initially uh, and it can give you some mystical experiences you know but people that are very materially oriented goal oriented they might feel frustrated when neptune is around because things are confusing so the lesson if you're those degrees 18 to 23 in gemini let go and let god go with the flow if you want to keep some semblance of routine and um, order in your life set those routines if you can but don't push yourself too much with neptune you just you can't exert yourself too much uh set certain routines you know and uh, again as i said always as a confidant of some sort maybe a, a teacher wiser who can help direct you during the more foggy periods so to speak uh, and Neptune will just dissolve quite a few things of your life with the moon it makes you highly psychic emotional it can make you highly easily to fall in love when Neptune squares the moon. Romantic. can even change your style to be more girly or more innocent type of thing. It's funny. It's interesting. Neptune is interesting. I, I actually loved my Neptune difficult transits because I was zoned out in a trance. <laughs> I was basically in a party mode for two years. and <laughs> But it, it was confusing a little bit, you know. But it has way higher manifestations as well than those that I said. So I hope I wish you to fill those ones. All right. So thank you so much, Gemini. You know, mostly it's like so many good stuff for Gemini. I can't say how excited I am for you guys. You deserve it after coming out of the bit of a darker spot. Now, like the gods, the planets, everything is aligning your higher self to put you on the right path and to give you guidance and uh, to help you discover yourself and follow your dharma and true true north as they say thank you and things will be easier and easier and supportive for you you'll see